Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I want to thank everyone who was here today, particularly for the families who have experienced enormous grief in their lives. Thank you for having the courage to show up on the Hill today for what is, I'm sure, a very difficult day for each and every one of you. I hail from South Carolina, from South Carolina's first congressional district. And unfortunately, we are no stranger to gun violence or mass shootings. Seven years ago this summer, we had Mother Emanuel, where a white supremacist bought a gun he should not have legally been able to buy, went down to Charleston, South Carolina in the 1st Congressional District and murdered nine black church members at Mother Emanuel. Just a few months ago on April 26th, there was another shooting in a parking lot next door to a Little League baseball game where over 30 shots were fired. And the video showing the terrified children crawling off the baseball field um, and their parents in fear in Pepper Hill in North Charleston. Um, and we've seen these spikes in crime, spikes in shootings, but it's not just crime with firearms, it's crime, it's, it's women who've been raped, rapes are up, assaults are up, aggravated assaults are up, mental health issues are up in this country over the last two years, political crime is up. We saw someone who showed up on the steps of the a Supreme Court justice basically, armed and dangerous and ready to kill. And I've seen political crime in my own, my own neighborhood. I had someone come up to my house and spray paint it. I've had my car keyed. I've had my life threatened. Someone threatened to hang me two weeks ago. And so we're seeing an increase in violence all across the country, regardless of political spectrum. Um, but right now, this hearing today, there's shouting into the microphones. There's vilifying of gun manufacturers. There's debate on you know, a particular bill we might vote on this week that we're not going to be able to vote on right now because it's not progressive enough. But what we're talking about today isn't getting at the heart or the root of the problem. And we're gonna have this hearing. It's gonna be theater. It's gonna be a performance, performance today for the cameras that are here. And we're not going to solve the problem of violent crime or violent crimes with firearms. And uh, we've got folks on this committee that want to defund the police. Well, the reason Democrats can't have a vote on banning certain types of firearms this week, because it does, there's other legislation out there that doesn't go far enough that funds police, doesn't defund them. And we can't have a real conversation about what's getting at the root of the problem. We had Highland Park uh, devastatingly a few weeks ago where seven people were killed. Well, just last weekend, just a few days ago in the city of Chicago, 65 people were shot. Five people were killed. And this is every single weekend in the city of Chicago where they have gun control measures and they're not working. And, it, and this is a very emotional subject. It's personal to me. It means a lot in my district. And we've got to get to the root of the problem. And many things that we could be talking about today, the active shooter alert that we passed out of the House a few weeks ago, one step in the right direction. But what I've learned in my research trying to figure out gun crimes in this country is most of the legislation that we are tackling at the federal and state level will not address the issue whatsoever. Um, Ms. Sampson, I have a few questions, and Ms. Okafor, I have a few questions with the few, little bit of time that I have left. Ms. Sampson, my first question for you today is, does a gun commit crime, commit a crime? Individuals with guns yes. commit crimes. Thank you. Is there any other industry uh, in the country where we punish the manufacture of a product that's made legally, purchased legally, that might then be later used to break the law? Do we do that? Do we punish manufacturers of alcohol or cars or knives for crimes that may be committed with those products later? So the distinction there, thank you for that question, mm -hmm. because there's been a conflation. We're not trying to hold manufacturers accountable for other people's activities. We're trying to hold manufacturers accountable for their activities and feeling the market. And when it comes to that, we do that. So the example- Okay, I'm gonna reclaim my time just real quick because I have, a, I have a couple more questions, but thank you. And I would argue that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are making it more uh, about that than the other. Uh, so recently we passed legislation up here that would ban certain firearms under the age of 21. Um, did you know that D uh, Dylan Roof, who killed the mother of Manuel Nine, he was 21 at the age when he bought his gun. He was also 21 when he committed that crime. Um, Ms. Sampson, do you know the percentage of uh, folks across the country who are uh, picked up with uh, firearms illegally? Do you know what percentage are maybe charged with a crime and or convicted? I do not. Okay. It's hard to get that data. In fact, in the state of South Carolina, when we had this vote on this bill a couple of weeks ago, um, I learned that the vast majority of crimes committed with guns in the state of South Carolina, and I'm sure states are different, but the vast majority are going to be the same. 
over 3,000 last year alone, but the vast majority of crimes with guns are committed by people over the age of 21. Thank you, and I yield back.